Hello, students. In this lecture, we would like to finish discussion about related rates by doing two more examples. First example we're going to do is the same example as we did last time, but now we would like to talk about camera's angle of elevation or elevation's angle. So um, on the picture, we have very similar picture to the previous example, but now we're interested in this angle theta, which is the angle of elevation. So we would like to know how fast is the angle of elevation changes when uh, the height is 400 feet. So basically we want to know, we want to know d theta dt, so how fast is the angle changes with respect to time when h is equal to 400 feet. And that's our main question. All right, so, um, so let's try to, to calculate that. So what would be our variables? Our variable here is time, and it's time in seconds, in uh, seconds. Then what else do we have? We have an angle, theta, angle of elevation, and it's measured in radians. What else do we have? We have height in uh, feet, we have, uh, we're given, we given how fast the rocket is moving up, which is 880 feet per second. And we know that the camera is 300 feet away. All right, so we would like to somehow connect angle with the height. Why? Because we know the, rela the rate of change of height and we would like to know the rate of change of the angle. So which formula would connect the angle theta to the height h? We can see that height h is opposite of angle theta. And we also know the adjacent side. So from trig identities, we'd like to find an identity that connects angle, opposite side, and adjacent side. So from uh, our review, we know that if we take tangent of theta, it's going to be opposite side over the adjacent side, which is h divided by 300. So this tells us that tangent of theta is uh, equal to h over 300, and we're going to take derivative on both sides. So it's going to be d dt of tangent of theta on the left equals to d dt of h over 300 on the right. So this tells us for the left side that we have to use the chain rule. Why chain rule? Because inside we have a function of time, which is theta, All right? So first derivative of tangent, which is secant squared of theta times the derivative of theta, which is d theta dt. And on the right side, one over 300 is a constant. So we can take it and move it outside. And inside we have dh dt, which is our rate of change of the height with respect to the time, which is 880. So since we want to find d theta dt, we can divide both sides by secant squared. And if we divide both sides by secant squared, we're going to get that d theta dt is equal to 
1 over 300 times dh dt times 1 over secant squared. And we know that 1 over secant of theta is exactly cosine of theta. So here we have cosine squared of theta. And we want to evaluate uh, d theta dt at h equals to h equals to 400. So 400. So we have 1 over 300 times dh dt, which is 880, times cosine squared of theta, which we don't know. Is there any way to find cosine of theta? So, so if we look at our triangle, in our triangle we have the following. We have 400 for h, 400 for h, 300 for this side, and this is angle theta. So we want to find cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is equal to, if we call this side L, like we did last time, it's going to be uh, 300 divided by L. So what is number L? We know that number L is the square root of 300 squared plus 400 squared, as we did in the previous exercise. So it's equal to 500, because it's a famous Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5. So that means our cosine is equal to 300 divided by 500, which is equal to 3 over 5, which we're going to take and plug it in over here into the formula, 3 over 5. Okay, so we have uh, 300, we have 3 on top, so we can divide this by 3, and so our answer will be Our answer will be uh, what would be the answer? It would be uh, it would be eight hundred and fifty divided by five hundred if we multiply this one hundred and five. So we need to take our calculator and calculate 850 divided by 500. And so our answer will be 1.0. 1 1.76. Oh, 1 1.76 uh, radian per second. And so we finish this problem. That's our answer. All right, so let's move to the second example of this lecture. In this second example, we're going to talk about the following problem. We have a liquid that is um, coming out of the uh, filter, and filter has a form of a cone. And basically, we have a uh, filter in the form of the cone. Usually it's done the following way. You have a cone and you have some liquid inside of it right, that uh, filters out through the cone. Filters out through the cone. So what do we know in this problem? We know that the cone is um, 16 inches tall, so from the top to the bottom we have 16 inches and the radius of the cone of the base is uh, 4 inches, 4 inches. And the uh, uh, liquid is coming out at the rate of 2 inches, 2 inches per minute. So uh, the volume is changing, the volume is changing at the rate of 
two inches cubed per minute. If we stop for a second and think that the volume is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so the rate of change of the volume should be negative because we're losing the volume of, of liquid. So we have to put a minus over here. Our rate of change is negative since the uh, uh, liquid is decreasing in level. All right, um, so let's try to solve this problem. What kind of variables do we need in this problem? Before we do the variables, usually with the cones, what people do is they take a knife and they cut the cone through this middle. And when they cut the cone through the middle, they get this shape, which is, a, is now not 3D picture, but 2D picture of this kind of a triangle. And we are interested in this triangle over here if we connect the center of the circle with the top of the cone. All right, but then people also go through and just think about important triangle of this shape. So basically we take this triangle on the right and we're just gonna deal with this triangle. This is a 90 degree angle. This is 16 inches. This one is four inches. And we have a liquid over here, over here at some height H and some radius R. All right, so let's try to create the variables in this problem. So we have time, time, in minutes, we have uh, volume in inches cubes per minute. Uh, this is volume. We have height of the liquid in inches. We have R, which is the radius of um, the liquid in inches. All right, so we want to find the uh, rate of change of what? Rate of change, how fast the depth of the liquid decreasing when the level is 80 inches deep. All right, so so we want to know how this age is changing. So we want to know, we want to know dH, dT when H is eight inches. H is equal to eight inches. And we given that dv dt is negative two inches cubed per minute. Per minute, right? Right. So what we want to do, we want to connect h and v in some sense, h and v. So we know, we know that the volume of the cone is V equals one third pi R squared times H. So if we look at this formula, it connects V, R, and H. We know something about, we want to find how fast is the rate of H changes with time. And we know how fast is the volume changes with time but we don't know anything about rate of change of the radius with time. So we would like to eliminate R. R from the formula. From the formula, since, since uh, we don't know don't know dr dt. 
All right, so to eliminate R squared from the formula, we have to use some other piece of information that is not really clear from the statement of this problem, but let's try to do that. So if we go back to our triangle, in our triangle, we have four inches here, we have 16 inches over here, we have some volume of water over here with radius R and height H. And if we give some names to this triangle, suppose we're going to call this angle A, this uh, vertex B, and this vertex C. This one is a little B, and this one is a lowercase c. So we can say that triangle ABC and triangle a, A, B, C are what? Let's try to think. This angle A is a share. So it's the same angle for both triangles. This angle is 90 degrees and this angle is 90 degrees. So they're the same. Therefore, angle C is also the same. So they have the same angle. And such triangles are called similar triangles. Similar triangles. And similar triangles have the following property. Property that ratios, ratios of corresponding sides are the same. Sides are equal. So let's try to think what it means for us. For us, that means uh, that if we take little h and divide by the corresponding side, which is 16 inches long, it's going to be equal to r divided by this 4 inches over here. And if we multiply both sides by 4, we'll figure out that we can figure out that R is equal to H divided by 4. So in our problem, whenever we see R, we can put H over 4. So let's go back to our formula. Our formula is, uh, is, uh, is V equals to 1 third pi R squared times H. So if we take this formula and uh, plug in R equal to H over 4, we're going to get 1 third times H over 4 quantity squared times H. And if we simplify it, we're going to get 1 third times pi times H squared over 16 times H. Finally, we have that volume is equal to 1 over 48, if we multiply 16 and 3, then we have pi and we have h cubed. So now we have related v to h, and we can take a derivative on both sides. So dv dt from the left side is d dt of the expression on the right side. So let's try to figure out what it is. We have dv dt equals to 1 over 48 is a constant. Pi is a constant. Now we have to find derivative of h cubed. So we're going to use a chain rule. Chain rule tells us take 3, put it down, multiply by h squared, multiply by derivative of dh uh, derivative of h, which is dh dt. So we can divide this 3 and 48 to get our 16 back. And uh, we have dv dt equals to 1 over 16 times pi times h squared times dh dt. So what we're going to do, we're going to multiply both sides by 16. And we're going to divide both sides by pi h squared. 
So we have here pi h squared. So we're left with dh dt on the right side, which is equal to dv dt times 16 over pi h squared. And now we want to evaluate this at h equals to 8 inches. So we have dv dt times 16 over pi 8 squared. So dh dt when h is equal to 8 is equal to dv dt which is negative 2 times 16 divided by pi and also 8 squared on the bottom. So this 16 we can divide by one of the 8. So we're going to get negative 4 over pi times 8. And uh, so we have negative 1 over 2 pi if we again divide by this 4. So now we just have to take our calculator and calculate uh, 1 divided by 2 divided by pi. So, and this is our answer, 159. So we have approximately negative, negative 0 0.159, 0 0.159 inches per minute. And that completes this exercise. Before we end the lecture, why do we have a minus? Because as you can see, when water is going out, our level gets lower and lower. And that's the idea of this problem. So practice with exercises on the related rates, and I will see you in the next lecture.